Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the cute natural born killer, Rachel, who is also Lendis' sister. So, the reason I wanted to do a second video on Rachel is simple. It's because I just picked her up. From the summoning banner of Afternoon Party, which was a Destiny summon, I, because I already had Liana and Tiaris, when I drew on this banner and got an SSR, it was Rachel. So, finally got this character, and that's why I wanted to do a video all about her. Now, before I begin talking about Rachel though, I should mention one very important thing. Because Rachel is a mage and a damage dealer, you're going to need access to all her bonds, right? And so, her fourth bond, which to be fair, you can kind of skip unless, except for uh, PvP, it unlocks with Angelina's assistance. So you'll need Angelina for her fourth bond. More importantly is her fifth bond. And the fifth bond requires Landius. So if you have Landius, she is absolutely amazing. If you don't have Landius, I honestly can't recommend her because you'll be missing out on 13% additional attack value and 13% sorry, 13 additional intelligence value. And 13% int is huge. Okay, so with all that said, let's begin going over Rachel as a character. So, Rachel is defined by her talent, which is absolutely amazing, in fact. It's like a combination of Lana, Chris, and a little bit of Almeda's talents, okay? From Lana, just like Lana, her talent increases damage dealt by a certain percentage. And because it's increasing damage dealt, this affects both her soldiers as well as herself. Okay, I think Rachel and Lana are the only ones who can increase soldier damage as well as their own damage. So this is huge right there. Okay, And it defines her as a top tier mage. In addition to that though, after actively dealing damage, she'll dispel one debuff from all allies within two blocks of her and heal these allies within two blocks of her by a certain percentage of her intelligence. Okay, So let's actually go over the percentages at this point. For the damage increase, at 3 stars it's 10%, at 4 stars it's 15%, at 5 stars it's 20%, at 6 stars it's a 30% damage increase. These values are the exact same as Lana and it's amazing. For the other percentage that changes, it's the heal amount. Okay. At 3 stars, it's only 150% of Rachel's int. 4 stars, 200%. 5 stars, 250%. 6 stars, 300% of Rachel's intelligence. So, <laughs> a high damage dealing and healing character is what Rachel is. That's pretty much it. And that's why Rachel is probably really a top tier mage. Her only real drawback is the factions that she's part of and it's a limitation because she's only part of two factions the first faction is protagonist and the only faction buffer for protagonist is matthew which works well for uh pve content but it's a bit of a struggle to bring matthew into your party for pvp the other class that she's a part of sorry the other faction that she's a part of is yeless legends and the only faction buffer for Yeless Legends is Landius. You know? If you can if you're allowed to combo Landius together with Rachel, wow. <laughs> you know? But I my personal feeling is your enemies probably won't let that happen very often. So there we go. So this is Rachel. You know, the big drawback of Rachel would be her factions. You know, especially getting a faction buff on her for PvP. Okay, so with all that covered her talent and her factions let's talk about her classes and the skills from these classes okay if you're if you just have rachel and you don't plan to put any runestones to her at that time very simple go from sister to arcane vessel to demonic core okay because this branch unlocks her best skills the mage class unlocks all her really her top tier skills Right? She gets Holy Word from Sister, she'll get a second attack skill, Dark Reaper, which we all know is an amazing attack skill, from Arcane Vessel. From Demonic Core, 
she gets access to magic defense support, which is, to be fair, kind of meh for her, but she also gets the Arcane Blast skill, which is a, a big AoE attack, and it's just amazing because the biggest thing about this skill is, just like any other big AoE attack, it has the 4 span with 3 range. Cooldown, of course, is 5 turns, but the biggest thing is it reduces the target's magic defense by 30% for 2 turns. This magic defense reduction allows all follow-up attacks to do a lot more damage. So that's why the Demonic Core is such a good skill, right? Uh, from her Bishop class, she gets access to Demolish. Demolish is a second AoE attack, and it's a more standard one. 3 range, 3 span, and 3 cooldown. It does dispel one buff from enemies, but drawbacks are it's only effective against demons, and yeah. Overall, you really wouldn't use this skill unless, let's say, you were doing like auto battle on goblin treasure runs, you know, getting more gold, and you didn't want to play it out manually. Other than that, from her oracle class, she'll get access to another one point skill, Consecration. After battle, you have a 40% chance to restore hit points of all other friendly units, 15% of their max hit points. My opinion is, Rachel's talent already gives healing, so you don't need a 40% chance of a second heal. It's not worth bringing, not for the one point. And finally, from also from Oracle, she gets access to the Gospel skill. And Gospel is a quite a useful skill for PvP, not very useful in PvE. This skill boosts the attack and defense of a single unit by 20%, and it, the most important part of this is it grants the unit immunity to all debuffs, and it lasts two turns. Okay, When would this, this gospel skill be useful? For example, let's say you bring Rachel, and you could not bring a faction buffer, right? Then having her with gospel will allow her to basically be a self-faction buff, if you will, and also grant the immunity to all debuffs. So that's something worth considering. Um, other than that, you can also use Gospel on another ally, let's say a tank or whatever, to give them the immunity to all debuffs once again. So there you go. That's why Oracle is has actually it does have a lot of utility. Last but not least, from her Saint class, she gets access to Meditation. Meditation effect is when unit hit points is above ninety percent, Int and Magic defense are increased by ten percent. In PvP. It's very hard to keep your characters healthy because everyone is blasting away with AoE attacks, right? So some t in that sense, meditation may not be the best skill. Even though it's a one-point skill, it may be hard to bring it, right? Or hard to have it, its effect kick in. So that's something to consider. Um, good for PvE though, just not good for PvP. The problem with this is you have to put a runestone into this short uh, class, right? There's no second class master. So, given how rare runestones are, I can't really recommend putting a runestone into Saint. Yeah. So, just like with every other character that you would seriously use, you'll definitely do the double class mastery. You know, if you somehow have a spare runestone to spare, by all means, pick up Saint since it does give seven additional intelligence. But you could go without it. That's basically it. So. Now, with all her classes covered, let's talk about her skills. And first things first, let's talk about PvE, right? Because that's what everyone wants to know. In PvE, I think it's fairly simple. Most of the time, you'll probably just run three attack skills. Dark Reaper, Holy Word, and Lightning Strike. You know, this will allow her to endlessly launch single target strikes. Just endlessly. You use Holy Word, right? You use Dark Reaper. You use Holy Word again. You use Lightning Strike. You use Dark Reaper, you use Holy Word, or whatever. You, know? you can just endlessly cycle between all these attacks. You can choose to remove Lightning Strike, and then throw in another one-point skill, such as Meditation if you have it, or you know Magic Defense Support. It's My opinion is it's fairly hard to use this Magic Defense Support because you're more likely to keep attacking with Rachel, right? And if you're attacking, it's hard to be placed beside an ally to give them this buff. So if something that's why for for uh, PVE content, I would say you probably just want to run all these single attack skills like this. If you can't do so, right, you can always also run this. 
Arcane Blast, Holy Word, and Lightning Strike. Because both of these have a one turn cooldown, so she can endlessly launch these two attack skills, and when needed, launch an AoE attack. So this is also a great method to develop Rachel. The only reason I, to be honest, the only reason I recommend Dark Reaper is because it does ignore 30% of the enemy's magic defense, and you do self heal, right? So Dark Reaper is just a great way to attack things like, well, Ice Dragon and so on, right? Enemy ranged characters, enemy mages, where you can do damage and as long as you survive, you'll heal up back to full. So there we go. So these are the two, I guess, skill combos that are most common for PvE content. Now, if you're doing PvP, of course, things change. PvP, you absolutely want to bring Arcane Blast. That's a must. Then you have to choose for a second two-point skill and a one-point skill. You know, probably, you'll probably throw in Holy Word. And the last skill, you know, Lightning Strike would work quite fine. This would still be a good PvP uh, skill setup. But sometimes, you might not bring Holy Word in favor of bringing Gospel. So in that case, you'll probably be Gospel, right? Arcane Blast, and then Lightning Strike. So there we go. I think th these would be the most common skill builds for Rachel for PvP and PvE. I'm just going to change mine back to her, I guess, fairly standard setup. All right. So with all her skills covered, skill combos, classes, let's actually, oh, there's one thing I forgot to mention about Rachel's classes, and this is very important. Okay. Demonic Core. Demonic Core actually flies. Okay. It's kind of like Bozo in that sense. Oracle does not. In addition to that, Demonic Core has more hit points than Oracle and also more intelligence. So these three things make Demonic Core her best class, her final ending class. Oracle's only advantage is that it does more damage to demon units. However, Rachel already has Holy Word for additional damage to demon units, so you don't need to stay in the Holy class. So it never makes sense to leave Rachel in the Holy class. You just always want to be Demonic Core, so it's very obvious for her, which is nice. Okay, so with that mentioned, let's talk about her soldiers. From the training ground, Rachel gets access to Firebrand Sniper, Sky Archer, and Angels. Okay. However, her best soldier is very obvious. It's the one I have on her right now, which is Sorceresses. And the Sorceresses come from Demonic Core. The only time you would really want to not use Sorceresses is maybe using Angels occasionally. If for some reason you were using like an AoE Blast only, like Arcane Blast and uh, Demolish Rachel, where you're relying on AoE attacks and you just want soldiers that are tanky. So you can see here, right? Angels have 508 hit points, right? Good, decent defense and magic defense compared to the sorceresses, which only have 404 hit points. In addition, they get additional attack and defense as long as they're above 50% hit points and take less magic damage. So that would be the only reason to use angels. I really can't re think of any real situations where that would occur though. In general, you want sorceresses because with two range, anytime you attack, whether with you know Holy Word and Lightning and so on, these soldiers will actually participate. Firebrand Sniper and Sky Archers, their only real advantage is that they do physical damage, right? As opposed to magic damage. But I don't think they're really necessary for Rachel at the end of the day. And the other thing is only Sky Archers fly. Firebrand Sniper Stone. So at the end of the day, when you narrow it down, her three possible soldiers are sorceresses, sky archers, and angels. And I think 99% of the time you'll just use sorceresses and that's it. In terms of hero boost, Rachel's hero boost is kind of odd when you look at it at the beginning because her default hero boost is 5% attack, 10% defense, and 15% magic defense. So why does it boost defense and magic defense more than, you know, attack and hit points? But... If you bring up her bonds page, right? Rachel's third bond, which is always the important bond, her third bond boosts attack and magic defense. So, as a result of that third bond, her final hero boost values are as follows. 
Okay, 10% hit points, which is pretty crappy. 30% attack, which is pretty good. It's not 40%, but the fact that Arcane Vessel increasing damage by 30% more than makes up for that 10% attack lo uh, loss. Defense is increased by 20%, which is, again, kind of odd. But magic defense is increased by 40%. So I guess the key things you'll see is the 30% attack and the 40% magic defense. That's what matters. All right. So with all that covered, let's now talk about Rachel's equipment. Okay. And for PvE content, you know what? Any, like, any SSR staff that gives high amount of intelligence and boosts int is fine, you know. Same thing with the uh, accessory. You just want an accessory that gives int and int increase, right? Armor and helmet, you know, as long as you have, like, level 50 items, you're fine. And this would be, to be honest, even this set that I have on my Rachel right now would be more than enough for PvE content, even though it may not necessarily be very good for PvP. In terms of enchant, okay? Rachel's big issue is her lack of mobility, that she only has three mobility. Even though she's flying, that three mobility factor really limits her combat effectiveness. So ultimately, the best enchant for Rachel, I, in my opinion, would be Breeze. And this would be a great enchant for both PvP and PvE, because the two-piece effect is more int, the four-piece effect is 10% more damage, and then you get the chance of plus two mobility, right? So far and away, it's pretty easy. If you're building a dedicated set for Rachel, give it, give it the Breeze enchant. If you don't have a dedicated set for Rachel, you know, she can, she's actually reasonably versatile if you don't have that mobility increase. For example, she can use Full Moon, because Full Moon gives plus 10% to all stats when hit points are above 80%. And with her attack skills being Holy Word and Dark Reaper, she should be able to stay at full health. So that Full Moon will always kick in for the extra stats. So effectively, Full Moon would give her plus 15% intelligence, 5% here and 10% here. She can also use Clocks, right? Because Clocks, while it only gives 5% int, it allows you to have chances of your skills refreshing their cooldowns, right? So clocks, refreshing your cooldown would be great for Arcane Blast. You can toss out two Arcane Blasts, you know, one after another. You can keep tossing out Holy Words or Dark Reapers. It, clocks is just a great enchant for Rachel for PvE content as well. She can use magic even. Magic, right? 5% int increase here, skill damage increased by 10%. She's always using skills, right? And then AoE damage gets another 5%. So magic would even work for her as well. So all of these four red enchants are quite versatile and work quite well for Rachel. You know? The only one that doesn't is Rough C, and that's because Rough C's four-piece effect is increasing attack value, right? Alright, so that's everything about her enchants and we've talked about you know how in PvE she can really use any kind of sets of gear but now let's talk about the best set of gear for Rachel because I think that's what everyone is most interested in if they're going to develop Rachel and try to build up her optimal gear set so for optimizing her gear I am going to bring up the Google sheet by Black Cat from the Langrisser subreddit. And I'm going to mention, I will have the link to this Google Sheet in the video description because I get asked about this in every video I make. So I'll put the link in. All right, so here is the sheet. I'm going to increase the size of the words a bit to make it easier to see. And now let's talk about her best gears. So first, for Rachel, in my opinion, the whole point of getting her best set is to ensure that Rachel can survive an attack in PvP, right? So that means buffing up her hit points as much as possible while also increasing her intelligence. 
So to that end, I think her best weapon would be the Red Moon. Because Red Moon gives 10% int and 5% hit points. Okay. If you don't have a Red Moon, you know, just like me, you can use the Blue Moon for fine. But it gives 5% magic defense rather than hit points. So it is what it is, right? You could use... People have mentioned uh, using the Miracle Staff on Rachel because Miracle Staff would increase AoE damage by 15%. But remember, this does not affect her single target strikes. So that's why I don't personally think Miracle Staff is a best in slot item for Rachel. Right? Even though it can debuff enemies and so on and increase AoE damage, I personally say I think Red Moon is the better preference. All right, so next let's talk about SSR armors. And for Rachel, I personally think the best armor for her is Tenyo's Rope because it gives the 10% additional hit points for more survivability against physical attacks like, you know, Zerida assassins. That's what you're worried about with Rachel, assassins killing you off. So hit point increase is important. So in addition to the 10% hit points though, Tenyo's Rope effect is when attacked, you have a 30% chance to dispel one enemy buff and inflict one random debuff to the enemy. If this kicks in, for example, and let's say it reduces the enemy attack by 20% and removes the plus 20% attack buff, your Rachel's guaranteed to survive. You know? So it's that's why Tenyo's Rope is the best in slot for Rachel. You could potentially use Baldur's White Robe for the chance of doing full damage against any melee attacker, but it increases magic defense, right? So that's why I don't think Baldur's White Robe is as good as Tenyo's Robe. The rest are kind of meh. Alright, let's talk about helmets now. Rachel's helmets, and actually mage helmets in general, are incredibly hard to choose between because there's so many helmets that are good. I think I talked about this in uh, my video on Lana, but I'm going to cover it again in this video. The helmets that are good for her are... There's four of them. Actually, there's five of them, okay? If you're talking about survivability, the best you know, multi-purpose use helmet for Rachel is probably Tenyo's headdress because there's a 10% additional hit points effect, right? The secondary effect is that after you take action, you have a 100% chance to grab one random buff to one friendly unit within two blocks, right? This secondary effect is pretty good for Rachel because, remember, her talent heals characters within two blocks. So you'll likely have allies within two blocks of her after you attack, which means Tenyo's headdress will help those allies. If you don't choose to use Tenyo's headdress, like let's say you don't have one, you can always give her a Yetrasil Reef for the 10% hit point boost. The secondary effect, which grants that, uh, which is say, the same buff as Sage's hat, it's hard for Rachel to use it because she's going to attack and you have to have an ally right beside her. So, and that's kind of hard. So, that's why Yetrasil's Reef is definitely not as good as Tenyo's headdress. If you're looking at the, from things on the offensive side though, then you can choose between Soul Stealer Headdress, Odin's Battle Helmet, or Charon. So three other options. These three options, two of them increase magic defense and one of them increases defense. So that's why they're not as good as increasing hit points. Defense, well, mages don't have high defense. So 10% defense is not that great. And magic defense does not protect you against assassins. But their secondary effects are great. Soul Stealer Headdress secondary effect, right? 50% chance to silence one enemy within three blocks. So if you kill off one enemy, there's another enemy within three blocks, they can have a chance of getting silenced. Odin's Battle Helmet. When eliminating an enemy this turn, dispel five buffs from one enemy within three blocks after taking action. In my personal opinion, if you were to choose an offensive one, you would choose Odin's Battle Helm. Because Rachel is a high damage dealer. Right? She's likely to one-shot targets with her talent and sorceresses and attack skills. So you'll want to kill off enemies and then 
If possible, debuff another enemy, removing all their buffs. The faction buff will be gone. So that's why I think Odin's Battle Helm would be a great helmet for her if you're planning to use a single target strike. Rachel. In, and the final helmet, which I mentioned, was Charon. And Charon's effect is after taking action, 50% chance for the damage received, 50% uh, chance to increase damage received by 15% for one enemy within three blocks. Okay. So what this means is, right, you attack an enemy, you have a 50% chance to debuff them so that they take more damage from future attacks. It's a nice helmet, for sure. Yeah. So there we go. Multiple helmets that she can use. It's kind of up to you which one you want to equip on her. Generally speaking, if she's more of an AoE attacker for you, you'll probably want either Tenyo's headdress or Soul Stealer headdress or Sharon. If you're more likely to use her as a single target killer, then you'll definitely want Odin's battle helmet. So it's kind of up to you. Last but not least, let's go over accessories. And in terms of accessories, I've mentioned this before, but Rachel is good with any accessory that increases intelligence, right? Whether it's the list of all the mage accessories or even the list of the accessories for healers, more dedicated to healers. In terms of the healer ones though, I would say the only one you would really want is True Cross. Because True Cross, first, it gives the best combo combo of stats, which is hit points and intelligence. Hit points protecting against assassins, once again. And this secondary effect is when battling against demon and mage units, your int, magic defense, and defense increase by 20%. So it allows her to basically trade attacks against mages and demons and very easily come out on top, which is why True Cross can be used on Rachel. But I actually personally don't think it's her best in slot. Okay? The reason I don't think it's her best in slot is for PvP oriented purposes. For PvP, you know, Holy Ring would probably be pretty important because of the immunity to silence effect. If you choose not to use immunity to silence though, you can always choose Star Earring. Because Star Earring gives the, once again, hit point increase and intelligence increase, another int increase, and more importantly, when battling against assassins and archers, Defense in increased by 30%. Now, I did say mages generally have low defense, but the combination of 30% additional defense and 509 additional hit points will very likely allow your Rachel to survive. Especially if your Rachel has more hit points from a Tenyo's headdress and more hit points from a Tenyo's robe. Now, if you don't have Star Earring, or Holy Ring though, you can also give her Dimensional Jewel. Because when you're attacking with a skill, you have a 30% chance to reduce the cooldown by one. So hopefully with this, you can keep tossing out Holy Words endlessly, right? And of course, Dimensional Jewel gives 509 hit points and int rather than magic defense. So great accessory for Rachel. I would personally say if you're talking PvP, you probably want Holy Ring or Star Earring. Choose one of these two. Alright, so that is all of Rachel's gear. And I'm just going to jump back into the game and this pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about Rachel. Um, I hope you found this information useful for you in building up your powerful Rachel. Just as a quick note I should mention, uh, I my Rachel with her single class mastery like this and this set of equipment, I've actually used her a few times in world arena. Or sorry, in regular arena already, right? And when I used her to attack, it would be to combo her with my other mages. So what I would bring would be Rachel Bozal and Lana, right? So it would be kind of like what I personally have been doing for good or for ill was Bozal would hit first, then Rachel to decrease the enemy magic defense, and then Lana finally, 
and with these three AoE attacks, I'm usually able to kill off all the enemies in one go. The only exception to that, of course, is when the enemies bring Juggler, because Juggler will heal up his whole party. But otherwise, these three AoE attacks with Leticia to give movement just crushes enemy parties, just like that. And that's a Rachel with, with basically no bond upgrades, no, you know, she's not even mastered on her single cl first class, and yet this was still works. So take it as you will. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.